Uh, I wanted to have a chance to talk to you because I have received so many emails and phone calls and letters uh, from so many of you expressing, understandably, despair uh, about what happened yesterday. A surprise, uh, some cynicism, a lot of anger, uh, the kind of normal stages that people go through in terms of grief, a lot of denial as, as well. Uh, and so I thought it might be possibly useful, and I hope it is, if I just had said a couple of things. Uh, first of all, many of you are angry with the Democrats and the Democratic National Committee. I get it. I am too. Uh, if they had not uh, exerted the kind of influence they did in the primaries, maybe Bernie Sanders would have been the candidate. Maybe Bernie Sanders would have won. Uh, but they didn't, and he didn't. And we've got to look forward right now, and we've got to be as practical and as strategic as we possibly can be, uh, accepting what happened uh, and also accepting our despair about what happened. Uh, you can be upset, you can be angry, uh, but I think it's also important for us to, um, after a decent pause where we kind of recollect ourselves and assimilate all of that, uh, we move forward. We think about what needs to be done right now. Uh, I would say one of the most important things right now is to be sensitive to civil rights and civil liberties. Uh, Donald Trump unleashed the furies during this campaign, and there are a lot of people out there who are understandably uh, frightened because they are immigrants or minorities. Uh, they are uh, women who are worried about sexual harassment being legitimized in some way. Uh, there are others who feel very, very vulnerable right now, and I understand that vulnerability. Uh, and it is incumbent on all of us uh, to be extra sensitive to that vulnerability, to go out of our way to uh, make sure that people are not bullied uh, in the wake of this. And I have seen, uh, not only in the United States, I'm old enough to have seen it, but I have seen historically and know about historically other instances where uh, the mere fact that you have a prominent individual saying something is okay to do or say uh, inspires others and releases out of the bottle that genie that should never be released out of that bottle. So all of us have absolutely a responsibility to be cognizant of others, uh, to try to do as much as we can, to, even in our little orbits, uh, to protect the vulnerable and to bring people together. Another thing I think is very important for us to do is to make sure that we hold on as best as we can after January uh, and think about how we can do it now, develop some strategies for doing that, uh, the progress that has already been made, and maybe even use some jujitsu. Uh, the Republicans are going to want to and will have the votes uh, to, uh, for example, get rid of Obamacare. But there are so many millions of Americans who would be left out in the cold, who are dependent right now on uh, Obamacare, and for whom health care is not nearly what it needs to be. In fact, a majority of Americans are paying more for premiums and co-payments and deductibles. Uh, so maybe this is an opportunity to get Medicare for all, or at least put Medicare for all on the table. Remember, Medicare is the most popular program in the federal government. Uh, when Obamacare was being suggested, a lot of conservatives went around with placards saying, don't touch my Medicare. So maybe a jujitsu move right now, thinking through what we could do in January might be helpful. Uh, the same thing with the environment. Uh, Donald Trump says he doesn't believe human beings have caused global climate change. Well, obviously he's wrong, but maybe we can use this moment uh, to make people even more determined uh, to hold on to the Paris Accords, hold on uh, to uh, the EPA and what the EPA has accomplished so far and explore other alternatives. Let me say also, for those of us who are blessed as I am and as some of you are to live in a progressive state, there are many things that we can now do and we have in my sense an obligation to do as a model for the rest of the country. Uh, not only raising the minimum wage and paid family leave, uh, but also expanding health care at the state level and providing uh, the kind of infrastructure, the kind of educational reforms that we would have hoped the federal government would have done. 
a tuition-free public higher education, for example. Some states might be able to do it. Close down some of the prisons and use that money, particularly for people who have been imprisoned for nonviolent offenses, and use that money for free public higher education at the state level. Let's see if it's possible. See if it's possible in big states, and big progressive states like California and Massachusetts and Oregon and, and Washington and elsewhere. I think it also is incumbent on us in these next months to be thinking very, very hard about 2018 mm. and also 2020. Who are we going to be pushing? Who are we? Who do we want to represent us in the primaries, in the Democratic primaries, maybe even the Republican primaries? Remember the success the Tea Party had in going after those primary elections. And remember also the importance of all of us coming up with candidates, maybe you running yourself, school board or city council, or maybe even for Congress in those elections. Uh, finally, there is an opportunity now to remake the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is in shambles. In fact, there is a lot of soul searching going on, rightfully, justifiably so, in terms of what the Democratic Party is or should be. Maybe now is an opportunity, or over the next, next six months or eight months, uh, for us to suggest changes in which the Democratic Party is really representing more of the poor, more of the working class. It's not just a party that goes after the white swing vote in the suburbs is not just a party that goes after big money, but a party that actually is listening to most Americans, particularly sensitive to widening inequality, particularly sensitive to the corruption that widening inequality generates when you have huge wealth at the top that is being channeled and used in order to gain influence to get even more wealth. Maybe right now is the best time when Donald Trump, with his authoritarian populism, has shown indirectly that Bernie Sanders and his alternative of progressive populism is critically important. So, essentially what I want to say to you is I certainly understand your feelings. I share them. I woke up tomorrow, I woke up this morning feeling uh, absolutely, almost in despair but there's a lot of work to do. Please do not fall into cynicism. Cynicism is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you are cynical, then they, the special interests, the moneyed interests, the people who don't have the public interest at heart will take over everything. It is our responsibility. Now at a pretty dark time, I haven't seen it quite this dark. I was around when Richard Nixon became president, uh, those terrible days. I was around when Ronald Reagan became president. Uh, but this is especially, especially troubling. All I want to say to you is don't be cynical. We have great, great work to do, and we will do it. Thank you.